Can I do the double though? No. Welcome back everybody to the second week of the Shell videos. We are looking at Shell's Drive Carbon Neutral campaign and we're just asking ourselves, does it make sense? If it does make sense, let's double down on it. If it doesn't, let's figure it out. My friend Tom, who's been helping me a little bit to think about this, as a response to the first video, he said, really what you're saying is there's three bits. There's the message, the money, and the manifestation. And I agree. So today we are going to look at the message. But before I do that, I want to just start by taking a little look at what you guys responded to the first video. I've got an email from Timothy Chippendale. Tim says, Shell is just acknowledging the damage they're doing and attempting to offset that. It's not being proactive in stopping the harm they're doing. Therefore, I find it hard to label this as activism. Just my thoughts. Stay safe, Tim. <laughs> I've got to say, I love that email in the tone of it, Tim. Thank you. And I agree with you. When I've been thinking about this in small company context, own up to your responsibility, then say, what can I do to reduce the emissions I'm making on the world? And then what can I do to offset that which I can't reduce? Can I get a screen share? 498 views, eight comments. Mark Rose says, at least oil companies put a bit into renewables. Interesting point. Not all companies do that. Bill Bilson says, this is great. And if it is legit, they should get credit. However, I can't help feel that this is a desperate way of selling oil, which is ever decreasing demand right now. How can millions of people pumping gallons of fuel into their cars every single day be immediately carbon neutral? I hope this isn't a temporary fix to get sales through the pandemic. To be fair to Shell, this campaign is been planned for a year, not in reaction to the pandemic. He says, if it is true, I'll sell my Prius and start driving my 4.8 V8 land yacht on the daily like everyone else will. I hope not. Got me thinking though, I want to know more about this. Really appreciate you making that comment. These are, these are the exact comments I was hoping to see, guys. So, on to the message. Firstly, let's start with the press release. Drivers set to go carbon neutral with Shell. This is their press release as of the 10th of October, 2019. Shell will become the first retailer to offset the carbon dioxide or CO2 emissions from their customers' fuel purchases at its UK service stations at no extra cost from the 17th of October. And this will be available in a thousand Shell branded service stations. Drivers will automatically take part in the offsetting program every time they scan their Go Plus app or card with their fuel purchase. The reward program is available to join free of charge through the scheme. So it's automatic and you will get a personal carbon statement so you can see how much is being offset on your behalf. 20% of fuel sold by Shell in the UK goes to customers already registered with Go Plus. So of all the fuel that Shell is selling in the UK, 20% goes to these automatically eligible Go Plus members. And how Shell will offset it is by purchasing carbon credits generated from projects in the UK and internationally that protect and regenerate forests. These projects are independently verified to ensure they have the intended impact. And Shell estimates that they will spend approximately 10 million to purchase these carbon credits. So we'll come on to the money next week. But Shell supports the government's target of net zero emissions by 2050. So far, we know that it starts in October 2019. We know that 20% of all of the fuel sold by Shell in the UK is automatically eligible every time someone scans their fuel card. Importantly, what is it that they're offsetting though? It says this covers all the emissions from the life cycle of our energy products, from finding and producing oil and gas and manufacturing products to customers' emissions from their use of the energy products they buy from Shell. It's not just the gas that you burn when you put it in your tank, but actually the cost of getting that oil from the ground in whatever country or whatever seabed they find it to the forecourt where you then purchase it. So that is a very bold commitment. One in five Shell customers in the Netherlands are now driving carbon neutral. That makes sense because up here it says 20% of fuel sold in the UK is going to these Go Plus members who will all automatically be registered. That's not insignificant, is it? We know from the first video that Shell is a big company and if one on, in five of those 
people are driving carbon neutral, that is a good effort. So Shell plans to do it with Land Scotland, a Scottish government agency. This introductory offer will be available every time a customer uses Shell Go Plus with their fuel transaction from October 19 to September 2020. At that point, Shell's intention is to continue to offer the choice to continue driving carbon neutral. This introductory carbon neutral offer does run for one year. Carbon neutral and carbon offset indicate that Shell has engaged in a transaction to ensure that the amount of CO2 equivalent to that associated with the production, delivery and usage of the fuel has been removed from the atmosphere through a nature-based process, which basically means trees and soil. One carbon credit represents the avoidance or removal of one tonne of CO2. So just below that, it says cautionary note. We have no immediate plans to move to a net zero emissions portfolio over our investment horizon of 10 to 20 years. Hang on a second. We have no immediate plans to move to a net zero emissions portfolio over our investment horizon of 10 to 20 years. Mm. So what, why that seems a bit confusing to me is when they say they support the government's target of net zero by 2050, but that they have no plans in the next 20 years, so by 2040, to get to net zero. So they'd have to do a heck of a lot of work in the last 10 years. The use of the term Shell's net carbon footprint is for convenience only and not intended to suggest these emissions are those of Shell or its subsidiaries. Okay, so that's the press release. That gives you an idea of where they're headed and what they're trying to do, right? So we get the game. Later we'll look at how much money that is and how they're manifesting it. So the next part is to look at the actual landing page and see what details are on there. But before we do that, I'm gonna go for a walk in the woods and I'll see you in a bit. When I was on the way back from Wales, seeing my aunt and great aunt, and I saw Drive Carbon Neutral on the petrol pump, this small print right at the bottom, goplus.shell.com forward slash CO2, that is where the terms and conditions are. That's where the small print is, describes what this program is all about. Nicely said, we will calculate the well to wheel emissions rates from your fuel purchases and buy and retire carbon credits to offset it. At Shell, we use government emissions factors unique to your fuel type to calculate the amount of carbon emissions that need to be offset. Well, that's important to know and that will come up in a later video. Okay, I agree with all their definitions here. Global origination lead for environmental products at Shell. That might be a name that we come back to later. Maybe we could get Harvon Yap to speak to us. How do carbon projects guarantee the emission reductions. Those check the projects on a regular basis. So there's the message. Does it line up to the money? Does the money line up to the manifestation? The manifestation is based on these does. I think that will do on that. So I don't think that the program page actually says a lot more. It just says the same stuff as the press release, but just in a more sort of succinct way. I don't know how you guys see this, but when I look at drive carbon neutral, I actually think that the term drive carbon neutral should mean that as you're driving, the process of driving itself is neutral, not another process has to be put in place, i.e. planting trees to make it neutral. That would be net neutral. And so I wrote a message to the ASA, which is the Advertising Standards Agency, asking them what they thought about the fact that net wasn't included in the title. On the 15th of April, I finally got a letter back two months later. We've been looking into your concerns. We think it's misleading if it causes a consumer to make a decision they would otherwise not have taken. You may be interested to know that offsetting is an area we've investigated before. We acknowledge that there are legitimate schemes. We won't be taking any further specific action on your complaint at this time. I then escalated it to the independent reviewer and I got an email back. Thank you for your letter. I shall consider the arguments carefully. Hayden Phillips, Sir Hayden Phillips, GCBDL. No idea what those letters mean, but he sounds extremely important. That was very nice of him. On the 6th of May, Reuters put an article out 
the regulator, ASA, said on Wednesday it was still investigating 17 complaints. See, this is what I find mad about th th this whole process, the first time I've dealt with the ASA, that in the whole of the UK, in the whole of 60, 70 million people living here, only 16 other people thought to write a letter and ask the question whether or not this was legitimate or not. And it really shows me that just showing that you're interested creates accountability. Because if those 16 people didn't do it, we wouldn't even be asking the question. We concluded the ad was unlikely to mislead consumers. I did receive one more email from the ASA on this matter. However, I'm not persuaded that the existing claim is likely to mislead consumers into making a transactional decision they would not otherwise have made. They would not buy something that they wouldn't otherwise have bought without the message. And this is the test by which claims are considered to be misleading must be assessed. In this case, the ad included a URL on the Shell website where consumers are able to establish for themselves the basis of the carbon neutral claim. What this all tells me is that they believe that Shell are doing everything right in terms of telling you and me, the consumer, the truth about what they're doing. The back door though, is this line here in Justine's email. There is a URL which goes to the Shell website where consumers are able to establish for themselves the basis of the carbon neutral claim. That URL is the, is the GoPlus website we've just looked at. We can see how long, who, how much, and what is being offset and how. What we don't get to see is the maths. So we don't get to see where that approximate 10 million pounds comes from and whether or not it seems to be the right amount of money. And if it is the right amount of money, then fair play. As long as we get to see it delivered and spent and we get to see the result done, then I'd be happy. But ultimately this is where, and I remember this, if you look back at the old videos with Givy and I was looking at the, the state of giving, why do we give? And I would talk to a behavioral economist who would say that, oh, there's something in, in economics called the warm glow, but we don't know anything about it, which accounts for why humans do illogical things like giving. But then you would speak to a neurosurgeon who would say, oh no, I know a lot about the warm glow. I've been studying the vagus nerve and the neurochemistry for the last 30 years. We know a lot about that. But in their independent fields, people think that that's the end of the knowledge. And I sort of see something similar here in the real world that Justine is not really making a comment on what is truly right. She's just looking at where does her responsibility end? Because there is a URL on the website where a consumer can make a judgment for themselves that it's not an advertising issue. I'd love to know whether you think they should have to say net in the title or not, but either way, let's give them that. The main body for marketing and advertising in the country has said that Shell have done enough that they are telling the truth to the world and that you, the consumer, can go on that site and figure out the answers, but they don't do the maths. And so we will need to do the maths next week to see whether it adds up correctly. Because ultimately, If we do all the maths and it all adds up, then yeah, Shell, if that's the case, then fair play and well done for a great campaign. Next time I'm up in Scotland visiting our trees, I'd love to come up and see how it works and see these hundreds of acres that you've been investing in. So if you're from Shell or you're from the ASA, or you've got some thoughts about the next week's money video or the next week's manifestation video, then please be in touch and we can do a conversation. We can record it on Zoom and include that as part of the video and we can build this story up and get the full picture. If nothing else, we'll be educating ourselves about carbon economics, which can't be a bad thing. Broccoli is a superfood, by the way. I will see you guys next Thursday, 9 p.m. for another installment where we look at the money. <laughs> I think I'm going crazy.